I'm Dr. Mark Stid, part of the Hom Hospital Medical Practices and Family Medicine. And I'm here with three of my colleagues to talk about some of the new concerns related to COVID-19 virus and specifically what to do if you test positive. I'd just like to have my other my friends to introduce themselves. I'm Michael Redding from Peds and in Internal Medicine. Dr. Chris Howell with Internal Medicine. Dan Maring with Family Medicine Zealand. So we know there's a lot of different places and a lot of different ways you're being tested. And you know, the first step we would like you to do if and when you are told that you've tested positive is to contact your PCP to see what the next steps would be. We would prefer that you call or contact us through your portal if that is easier, as opposed to simply showing up in the office as we're trying to limit the, the spread. Um, Dan, what would you be telling patients if they were to call your office as far as specific treatments that they can do at home? Sure. When patients call our office, they can generally expect to speak with a nurse or an MA um, who will take a basic inventory of their symptoms to determine whether they're mild, moderate, or severe. And then generally, we encourage people to um, begin their isolation, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, we encourage people, if they are living in family members uh, or within a household of people who have not yet been exposed, to do their best to try to limit exposure. So wearing masks when around their family members, uh, maintaining good hand hygiene, and continuing to monitor their symptoms. And there are certain supportive measures that we generally recommend and feel that are safe, such as Tylenol for high fevers. We generally suggest that people maintain adequate hydration. So if they notice a severe drop in their uh, urine output, that's a, a warning sign. And getting plenty of rest and, and just being vigilant. Um, it's also helpful to let people know that you've come in close contact with over the last over the previous couple of days that you've tested positive so that they can monitor for their symptoms as well. Okay, thank you. And that brings up the next topic is what is the difference between uh, isolation versus quarantine if you've tested positive or a member of your family has tested positive. Chris, do you mind talking about what close contacts are and what the differences uh, are? Sure. And so okay. you, you've tested positive, you're concerned, uh, you've been told that you need to isolate. And what does that you know, term mean? Uh, isolation means much what it sounds like. Isolation as much as possible from everyone, you know, including you know, family members who may be in the house. Um, sometimes this is impossible. Um, you know, if the affected patient you know, needs a caregiver, you can only do so much. But as much as possible, isolation should mean finding your own space in the house, uh, preferably with your own designated bathroom and not sharing that space with anyone. If meals can be made by someone else and brought to you with minimal contact between family members, uh, that's ideal. Um, in many households, you can't be perfect, uh, but we ask that you try as well as you can. It's one of the most dangerous situations we're seeing is when if someone is sick um, and then perhaps an older, older family member has a very intense exposure to that sick patient. Um, is where we're seeing some of our worst cases. Um, if you have family members who have been exposed to you, uh, they would then enter what's called quarantine. Uh, we define an exposure as more than 15 minutes of close contact, close contact being under six feet. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you're masked or unmasked. Uh, our current guidelines suggest that's considered an exposure which would require a quarantine. Uh, the quarantine for the exposed person is longer than the 10 days recommended for the infected person. Uh, sometimes people are confused. When I'm not sick, why do I have to you know, stay away from people for even longer? It's because once you have that exposure, it takes time uh, before you're gonna develop symptoms, before you're potentially going to spread that to other people. So your time that you need to stay away from others to protect them uh, is longer, 14 days. Um, you know, and that assumes that you don't develop any symptoms during that time. Okay. So that is helpful, um, and the good news is that there, while there are more cases, there is seemingly less morbidity and mortality, meaning less people getting admitted to the hospital, but there are still some cases, even in the younger ages, that can become rather serious. So Michael, can you kind of tell us what signs and symptoms we would be concerned about and when you would refer someone to the emergency room for more testing or evaluation? Well, I think part of what you need to take, what you take into account is underlying illnesses that a lot of patients sometimes have. So patients that have especially respiratory problems, such as diagnoses already of asthma or CPD, COPD, they have to, you have to be very careful that you don't ignore what would generally get you to go to the hospital anyway. So don't 
stay home with symptoms and problems that were ordinarily uh, maybe last year you would have gone into the emergency center. And there have been a lot of reports of patients probably staying home too long um, when they've had symptoms that are getting worse. And this disease, it's rare uh, with this disease, especially in children, that you see really severe complications, but it does happen. And it's, uh, they've been reported, everybody's seen the cases. And uh, for parents, if your child seems really sick um, and you think you would take them to see a doctor or go to, into the emergency room, that would be uh, uh, what you ought to do. You shouldn't stay home and be uncomfortable with the patient. Now, sometimes you do have time to call ahead, especially during the day, and that's always uh, appreciated by the clinic as well. But um, if it's nighttime and people are having worsening symptoms, uh, it's not recommended to stay home and, and get sicker. So sometimes getting in sooner is better. But particularly for respiratory problems, patients that have immunodeficiencies or have known problems fighting infections, patients that have received cancer care, um, all of those folks need to realize that they can get sick very fast. If they think they would go in at a, in a normal time, then they ought to go in. Okay, thank you. I hope this gives you some basic information on what to do if you've tested positive and what to do for your family members. Again, we would ask that you contact your primary care provider if it's during the working hours to see what they would recommend and either they can set up a telehealth visit to discuss it in more detail if you'd like, or in some cases they are doing some in visits in the uh, office. Although, again, with positive cases, there's little we can do from an outpatient standpoint, so we're trying to avoid that.